I now call this uh, regular meeting of Davenport Community School Board of Directors to order. Director Hayes, would you please read the board priorities? I'd be happy to. The Davenport School Board establishes the following priorities to ensure the academic success of all students. Provide leadership and direction to improve the overall learning environment in our classrooms, schools, and district, including the health, safety, security, and happiness of students and staff and to direct and support action programs and activities which reduce the impact of poverty on our students, their families, and our community. Thank you, Director Hayes. Director Beck, would you please read the mission and vision statements? Gladly. <clears throat> the mission statement is to enhance each student's abilities by providing a quality education enriched by our diverse community. And our vision statement is education that challenges conventional thinking prepares all students to compete in a global society and inspires our students, parents, staff, and community to answer the question, what if? Thank you, Director Beck. Now we will move on to presentations, uh, family learning guides, social emotional learning competencies, K through 12. Mr. Superintendent, take it away. Sure, we have two presentations for tonight. The first one, um, we are very fortunate to have Iowa State Extension Office as a partner with the Davenport Community School District. And in particular, this this human being right here in front of us, Ms. Best, she is a wealth of knowledge um, in areas that we don't have to be experts in. And so we're very fortunate to have her as a team member for the district. Also, we have with us uh, John Border, who kind of, he's the, He's the manager of our uh, our our part school partnerships, and he does a wonderful job with that. And so that John is here. So so Jen Jen has a, a, a presentation for us. So Jen, go ahead and take it away. And I board members, I believe you have at your at, in front of you the guides. And this is off of a request from uh, Director Snyder to 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 share these guides, get these guides out into our community because as you review them, they are a wonderful resource for for our, our family and students. So go ahead, Jen. Thank you so much. Do I have to push buttons here? Yes. Can you hear me now? Awesome. Great. Thanks so much. It's been a while since I've been here. It's always nice to uh, see everybody, and uh, thanks for having me. Um, so just a few things about the guides that you have in front of you. Um, so some of you are, uh, probably don't know that um, DCS has something called the Network for Community and School Partnership. And this is a group of community agencies, organizations, and groups that serve Davenport schools, youth, and families. And the purpose of that group is to promote reciprocal communication and shared programs and services in ways that support Davenport schools, families, and students. And we, um, at least pre-COVID, met once a month. Um, COVID has kind of uh, changed some of those things. Go ahead, Brenda. So a little bit of history here. Um, this particular group has been around for many, many years, it, it, way before my time. Um, and they have worked on various projects over the years to support the efforts of Davenport schools, um, particularly when it comes to how can we make sure that community agencies and partners really understand what's going on in the school district and then can support families and students. And so one of the projects we did in the 08-09 school year was we facilitated an effort um, to communicate core curriculum standards to family agencies and um, partners. And um, though that's what they looked like. Um, it was what to expect at each age in each curriculum area. And then there was a page for each uh, subject matter area for each grade level about how families can support kids in those areas. And we learned some things um, from that particular process. Go ahead, Brenda. Um, we learned that if we put a tangible product in the hands of teachers, they will have that conversation with families. Um, and so that was a really good outcome that we weren't necessarily expecting, but it was, it was a, a nice surprise. Um, we also learned that we could help provide specific ideas for how families can support academics, even in situations where families' personal knowledge is limited. Um, so even if uh, education seemed sort of far away and, and hard for them to understand, it was we could provide those specific um, kinds of tips for them and, and people appreciated that. So we learned that lesson. And then we also learned the lesson that if community partners know how to help students, they will. And so, go ahead Brenda, um, something else happened uh, in 2020. 
Um, the Iowa Department of Education adopted CASEL, which is the Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning. That's um, a model. And they released the final version in 2020. And this is the first time the Department of Education had had it in this way. Um, they have talked about 21st century skills prior, but this is the first time they really talked about competencies in this way. And they very specifically defined social emotional learning as the process through which children and adults acquire and effectively <clears throat> apply the knowledge, attitudes, and skills necessary to understand and manage emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships, and make responsible decisions. And so that national framework was adopted by the Iowa Department of Education, again with their final draft coming out uh, in the fall of 2020. So there's a lot of reasons why social emotional learning is a really important piece of education, even though historically we didn't necessarily talk about it that much. It's something we intuitively have understood, but we really didn't have a very specific framework to plug into until very recently. And so we can draw on the empirical literature for things like students who are participating in social emotional learning programs show improved classroom behavior. They have increased ability to manage stress and mental health uh, issues. They have better attitudes about themselves and others in school. We know that students who are engaged in social emotional learning have quality consistent uh, programs in those areas. They show increased academic growth compared to students who do not. Uh, we know that social emotional learning programming can have a positive impact way beyond the years that students actually receive um, that education, so past 18. Um, we know that it leads to resiliency. It can be a protective factor for things like conduct problems, emotional distress, substance use. The return on investment for evidence-based social emotional learning programs is 11 to 1. So uh, for every dollar that is invested in social emotional learning, we save $11 in uh, programs and services that we have to have for individuals who haven't figured out how to do those things in our society as adults. And social emotional learning also decreases the likelihood of living in or being on a wait list for things like public housing, public assistance, those kinds of things. So there's a real economic component to this besides the obvious one. Go ahead, Brenda. Which is, we know in education that brain function is hierarchical. And so children feel first, then they think. And so if we don't understand how to meet the social emotional needs of students, we can't get them into what we call the learning brain in education. Um, and so when we have a purposeful focus on implementing strong social emotional competencies, we can create an environment where all kids are in their learning brain. They're coming to school ready to learn because they have those skills. So this is what the CASEL model looks like. And um, directors, you can see this on the very back of one of your guides. It's on all of them. Um, the CASEL, going through all of the empirical literature for many, many years, created this model to help us really conceptualize and understand across the country, what do we really talk about? Uh, what do we really mean when we talk about social emotional learning? And you can see that they have divided um, social emotional learning into these five areas, self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision making. And then just like with any other type of curriculum, these are further divided down by grade level, what would we expect kids to be able to do at different ages, and then where are areas uh, for growth for them. So taking what we learned from those curriculum guides in 2008, 2009, the Network for Community and School Partnership had an idea. We said now that the state has adopted this particular model, we really need to be doing a better job of making sure that not only our families have access to this information, but community agencies and partners really understand this is how we can support students in a way that's developmentally appropriate that matches what it is that they're learning in their social emotional learning curriculum in schools. And so we created these guides for what is expected at each age, how can we support development at each age, and then the other thing that we know is really important is what are we asking community partners and families to do if they're looking at this and they have a concern and they say, you know, my kid is not on track for this particular thing. Maybe I knew it, maybe I didn't know it, um, but what is it that I'm supposed to do? And so we wanted to make sure that that element was included in these guides as well. So this is what they look like. There's a suite of four of them. 
This idea came from the Network for Community and School Partnership, as I mentioned. Um, my office developed them. And then this beautiful design uh, was created by Tag. Are they here somewhere? Thank you, Tag. Um, which is just beautiful. Um, and so this is what we ended up with. We, uh, the social emotional learning standards at, for the Department of Education, I guess they call them competencies, not standards, um, are divided into grade level bands, just like other areas of curriculum are. So that's what we have represented in the guides. So there's a K2, a 3-5, a 6-8, and a 9 through 12. So what we have done is um, our office actually had um, a little bit of money left over from another project, and we wanted to make sure that we at least had some printed guides to be able to provide to our community partners. Um, it's hard to have some of those conversations um, electronically, and so we wanted to make sure that when uh, families were coming into agencies or they're having those conversations, there's an actual something that they can pick up and say, you know, let's, let's, let's take a look at what um, your concern might be or you know how how we can we can kind of get together on this um, tag has sent out via district school media um, on the new website they will be on there as well when that comes up and then internal promotion um, uh, has occurred through dr. Klipsch's office wherever he is in this room I saw him a second ago thank you Um, so you can see, if you just kind of look at the guides, the very first page here kind of talks a little bit about what is social emotional learning, why should schools care about it, what are Iowa's competencies, and then it goes into what do, would we expect for each age level, and then on that second page, it's these are practical things that parents can do in their everyday lives to really think through and help kids develop these particular skills. Then at the back of every guide, there's two pages. One is about communicating with schools, how to have those conversations with school staff, administration, counselors, those kind of things. And then concerns about development. What do I do if I'm a family member um, and I'm concerned about something because I'm realizing that maybe my kids aren't quite where I would like them to be. Happy to answer any questions for you that you have. <coughs> Director Beck. First of all, thank you very much for putting this together and presenting it. This is fantastic. My pleasure. Happy to do it. Um, and uh, they're, they're, I think they're really, really helpful. Um, I'm just wondering um, two things in terms of promotion. Um, I really like that there's a, it's, it's a guide, right? Like a tips and here's what to look for. Kind of like you'd get at the pediatrician's office, mm -hmm. you know, which I think is super, super awesome. Um, so one, are we making sure that every teacher has the appropriate one for their grade level? And then number two, I don't, you may not be able to answer this, maybe this is a question for TJ, but would it be possible for us to send like a mailer, like a postcard saying these are available on the website to like all the families? Um, because I know, you know, Kids don't always bring stuff home from school, particularly those older grades. Um, and, you know, we're all on social media, but to varying degrees, the website, you know, it might not, it might just be another way to reach families. Because I think this is so important, mm -hmm. having students, you know, be there. I, I like the way you described it as hierarchical. I've also heard the term bandwidth. You know, if it's taken yep. up with all of these, these problems outside of school, I don't have any left for learning. And so framing it that way, I think, helps people really understand why it's so important for students to feel emotionally healthy and safe in classes. Definitely. So. Um, I can give you this much information. I can <laughs> tell you that all principals received, so one of the really cool things that TAG did was these are the printed versions, but the electronic version, which I think was in board packet, right? Mm -hmm. um, you'll notice it's formatted a little bit differently. It's formatted for an electronic format, and all of that did go to building administrators. So to the extent that building administrators forwarded that to their teachers, yes, they would have that. Okay. Um, and then uh, second question, I know that um, it was encouraged that they send out that information through eBlast um, so that parents could link directly to um, those particular things. And I think uh, that once the website has a kind of a permanent home for these, it will be easier to be able to do um, that sort of thing. Okay. Anything else? No. no. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dr. Beck. Any other questions? 
Oh, Director Snyder. Thank you, Jen, for coming. Um, I hope I didn't throw a wrench into your evening, but no, not at all. I Happy thought these it. were way too good when I first saw them to <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> just go with, with sending them out. I wanted a little kind of a background behind them and because uh, this is one of the best things I've seen. Oh, thank you. That's very Since nice. I've been on the board. That's and, very nice. Um, just outstanding. I like how they're sectioned out for K through 2, 3 through 5, 6 through 8, and 9 through 12. Um, social emotionally learning um, situ or, uh, problems and, and, and things have been there for a very long time and COVID has actually kind of emphasized those and made them even worse. So um, I think the timing for this is outstanding. Um, my only question would be, is there a version of this in Spanish? We actually have discussed how we are going to address that issue and that is still under discussion. Um, as I'm sure you know, it is uh, more complicated than you'd think to get mm -hmm. something that's this long uh, translated, but that is absolutely in the plan, <laughs> okay. that we would be able to have that not only in Spanish, but probably also Vietnamese and perhaps even something else, um, just because we do have, I think, 19 or 20 different languages yeah. um, spoken in the, in the district. Yeah, this is outstanding. And a huge thank you to you and My your pleasure. team and to John and to Jake and to everybody behind these because this is just absolutely outstanding. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy to hear that it's uh, useful. Uh, this stuff is, is evergreen, right? What's good for kids is always good for kids. And so hopefully these will last for you know, a very long time um, and be useful to, um, to the community. Any other questions? Anybody have any other questions? Um, thank you very much for this. I know a lot of hard work went into this. I would like to see if uh, there was a way to uh, have this added into like the parent portal so people can access it from an app real easy because everybody does everything on apps now. Um, and I totally understand what you're saying about translating stuff because I have to send stuff off to people because there's different dialects and everything else. And if you say one word and one, it means something totally different than what you thought. And Google Translate doesn't necessarily, it gets you close, but not there. Um, but again, I think this is great stuff. I'm glad to see we're doing things like this. And again, if it was in an app or something, then they don't just throw it away and we didn't waste all that paper and stuff, you know, because more often than not, if you send stuff in the mail, people just throw it in the recycling bin and things like that. But um, it seems that we're a digital age now. And I think people probably get on the uh, website on their phones and stuff too. So, but again, great work. I do like, like Director Snyder said that it's broken down and stuff. Um, Cause obviously kids are different at different ages and things like that. I wish I had this a, you know, a few years ago and I could have figured my kid out, but <laughs> now he's in high school and it's a whole different world. So it definitely no one can figure them out. <laughs> thank, thank you, you so again. Much. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Superintendent, you're on to your next presentation. Absolutely. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. Um, many of the board members um, have made a request for this next presentation. Um, and this presentation is surrounding something that buildings deal with all the time. So when we send out a communication or when we send out a text or an auto dial, all of those things, it's only as good as the information that's put into it. And the infinite, infinite campus system that in our district that we pull all that information from is actually in, housed in our curriculum department. And so Corey and I are going to go through this presentation together, um, just basically about our communication protocol. And it's a quick four easy slides. We're going to link this presentation to the, to the website. So that way, when people from the community say, I'm not getting the messages, it's almost always linked to... Um, a wrong email, wrong cell phone number, and it's super easy to go in and change. Um, Emily Rettler, I believe, is the voiceover in this little small video that's in here. So shout out to Emily Rettler, um, who, uh, who did a voiceover video showing how to go in and, and adjust your information. So let's go through this real quick. Go ahead, Corey. Okay. So when we... All right, thank you for letting me present this to you. So as we talk about communication, um, there's a varying levels of communication. Can you hit the next slide for me? So 
Oh, Joe, thank you. <laughs> so we, um, types of communication. We have regular communication that goes out, and that's everything from your newsletters, um, what's on the school lunch, all of those things. Um, and that comes out um, as a regular, it's routine information for families. Then we also have a level that's important. That means that there's something that families need to, they need to read it in a couple days because an event is happening, or they need to respond to something. And then we also have a level of urgency, <coughs> right? An event happened at school, and we need parents to read this within 24 hours so they are informed. So when we think about return to learn and some of our due dates for saying we're going to be online or we're going to change bell schedules, that goes into that important and sometimes even that urgent category. So our methods of communication are a little bit different for each of these types of messages. So regular communication comes out through district and billing websites. All of our billions have a website and then our district also. We have building newsletters. Sometimes we call them e-blasts. Most of our buildings are doing e-blasts, not, not hard copy newsletters anymore. Um, message boards that you see outside, right, of the schools, um, virtual backpack, which you are all familiar with, um, parent portal announcements. Buildings can actually put their own portal announcements, so if you log in a portal, you can see exactly what's going on, and then regular mail. When we get to those important messages, those are things that need to be read, responded within a couple days. Um, we use School Messenger. So School Messenger is an app overlay that pulls information from Infinite Campus, like TJ was referring to, and that's going to send out, it can send out a text message, right? It's going to send out an email. It can also send out an auto dialer. Those important messages, again, go to the website, media, and regular mail. We work with TAG on all of those really important and urgent messages to ensure that we have the right communication and the right coverage <coughs> in there so that our parents all understand that. Urgent, same way, but that might even go to the media, and that's where we really work with TAG to ensure that the right messaging gets to our community regarding those urgent, um, those urgent things. So translations are done for all important or urgent messages. School Messenger has the capability of translating those messages text by text to our families, which is really an awesome um, add-on. But we also do that when we put it onto the website, right? We make sure that everything goes on the website for those urgent and important that those are translated in our four major languages. So this gives you kind of an overview of how school messenger and parent portal work together, right? So emails and texts that are sent to parents use that contact information that parents provide in portal, which is a really important information, right? Parents can set up that information automatically by logging into parent portal and going to their settings. We're going to show you that video on that. But they can also at any time call stop by the school and have the school secretary update that contact information. I know we have some secretaries here in the office and that's something that they're constantly doing to ensure that the right information is getting to our parents and that they have that, um, that the co correct contact information. So they can do that. Um, if they don't have access um, to the Infinite Campus app or access to computer, that's an excellent route for our families to use. So the last slide here is well how do we how do we update the contact information so those are the two direct the first one is the direct link that will take all um, students actually and parents to parent portal the second one it's also on our website so there's another link on our website where it says for families that they can go there and Joe if you would play this uh, video for us so the whole Maybe purpose the whole purpose behind this is that it's very incredibly important for our families to have accurate information into campus. And so this is one of those things that you don't do all the time. And so ha having the ability to have a link to go and remind you of how to do it if you're, if you're not updating your information, because the, the day and age that we live in, things are sent out through technology now. And, and it's, absolutely critical that your information is correct. And we're entering in a time where we're gonna be registering for school, uh, kindergarten roundup, all of those things are happening right now. So it's ever more important that our information is the same, is, is in there and accurate. I think Joe has it now. <clears throat> Hello parents and guardians of Davenport Community Schools. In order for school building staff to reach you in a timely manner concerning your student, we want to ensure that your contact information is current and accurate.
please log into your parent portal account by visiting www.davenportschools.org forward slash portal or by accessing the Campus Parent app in the App Store or Google Play. Once you have logged in to your parent portal account, you will navigate to the upper right hand corner of your screen and select your icon. From here, you are going to go to settings and then contact preferences. At this point, you can update your cell phone number, your work number, or add an additional telephone number. Here, you may also update your email address add or modify your secondary email address. Your preferred language may be selected. This would be the language you would be receiving communication. Your options are English, Spanish, or Vietnamese. Further down, you may update your message preferences by selecting which message below you would like to receive via email. After you have updated and modified all of the information, please hit the Save button and simply log out of your account. Any further information or questions regarding your parent portal account can be directed to your student's school building. Thank you and have a great day. So in that demo, it did, it did just show the two primary languages, but School Messenger is an overlay app and School Messenger has the ability to send text and more languages. That concludes our presentation. Any board members have questions? No. I was just going to say, I think this is super helpful. Um, I think a lot of people until COVID forgot that parent portal was necessarily there. Um, and uh, I actually didn't know there was an app for parent portal. So now I do. Um, so yeah, thank you. Very helpful. Any other uh, questions? Um, I appreciate this presentation. It's something I've asked about for a long time. Uh, I love the Parent Portal app because I can keep track of my kids all day long. And we know where they're at with assignments, what they've been seeing, what they need to get done. And it's not like back in the day when you could tell mom and dad, oh, I, the teacher never gave me that because it's right there. I love it. Um, Did you see Meredith shaking her head? Yep parents are checking it right yeah. <laughs> so with Lily <laughs> I like that see even the kids know it too so especially when your parents get hip to it there's no more lying now <laughs> thank you again I greatly appreciate this and thank you to the vo voiceover lady what was her name Emily Rattler Emily Rattler thank you all right student board reports this is time for you guys to report to us what's going on in your buildings I'd be happy to kick us off here. So there's a lot of really positive stuff going on at Central right now, and I'm glad I get the opportunity to highlight it. Um, so we recently had our thespian charter compete in the statewide Iowa Thespian Festival. Um, and there's various phases of competition that you can move on to. I was lucky enough to place third in the state for solo musical theater, um, and I earned an overall superior ranking, so I qualified for the national competition. And then another student, Ladella Gallagher, um, she did a theater marketing presentation and she also earned an overall superior and she will be moving on to nationals too. Um, so it was a little bit different this year because it was virtual and people recorded their auditions and sent them in. Um, but we had great success there, so that was fantastic. Um, two of our IJAG students earned the Target Opportunity Internship and those students are Jeopardy Smith and Rayvon Bell. Um, so that's a, re a really prestigious and great opportunity for them to broaden their horizons and take a next step in their, uh, their professional careers. Um, we recently had our, our mock trial team compete virtually. Um, and unfortunately, we will not be moving on to the state level, but we did compete virtually. And it was a very difficult year for us because we had been practicing, vir practicing virtually as well. Um, so that was successful. Um, right now, we are doing auditions for the Variety Show and our spring musical, uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Um, so hopefully those will be available to live stream co this coming spring, um, given the success from our fall show, Clue, which we also live streamed out. So that's just a couple of the fantastic things going on at Central. And obviously, we're all back from spring break today and happy to be back in the building learning. Okay, thank you.
Thank you, Lou. Thank you. Thank you for your report. Uh, board reports. She didn't have nothing. She didn't want to talk. Uh, Director Poshton. Since the last meeting, I've been able to make a few more uh, school visits. And again, I, I want to thank the principals for spending the time uh, with me, and uh, I, I surely appreciate it. I'd like to thank uh, Principal Hartley at Williams Intermediate, Principal Finn at Adams Elementary, Principal Will Willis at Truman Elementary, Principal Baxter at Harrison Elementary, and Principal Bowman at Fillmore Elementary. And I'm, I'm just going to go through just some concerns and frustrations and uh, some other <coughs> comments along the way. Um, I don't think it's any surprise that space is limited at the elementaries with this with the uh, sixth grade there. Um, wasn't an issue until we got back to 100% uh, in the classroom. Class size is a concern. Substitute teachers um, is also uh, been a big impact in the buildings. Uh, there's a need for more interventionist uh, in reading and math. Again, behavior, social, emotional, um, some of the things that were just brought up tonight, um, a big concern in the buildings. Building needs, I don't think I've been to any building this year that has not had a, a rough water leak. It's been a bad, bad winter with the ice and everything. So, and I, I'm sure uh, operations is addressing those. Um, another thing in the elementaries that um, there's a concern, and that's um, dis dismissals in the afternoon. There's a lot of congestion. Uh, you've got all the the uh, buses and. Uh, and then parents picking up their children. Um, and in some instances, um, uh, there's just not enough room, so it's, it's very congested. Another concern that's been brought up <coughs> numerous times is attendance and truancy. Um, there's a feeling that there should be early intervention and then also a clear procedure on, on how to follow that for, for all buildings. We talked about the administration reorganization, and there's a lot of questions. And I think everyone's just waiting to see uh, the final rollout and how all that will take place. Everyone's on board as far as CRVP. Um, a couple things that um, they did voice as concerns is from once you get as far as you can go with CRVP, um, where is the place going to be for uh, violent offenders? Now, I'll ask the other board members. I came across something at, at one of the buildings that they talked about, and I had never heard it, heard it before, and, and maybe I missed it, uh, but they talked about a reconnect program. And um, this is, I guess, taking place at Williams and Monroe. And again, I, I guess I have more uh, questions than details on that. I was able to witness the uh, breakfast program at Truman, and I believe that's uh, taking place both at Truman and Jefferson. I think it's a great program. Um, I think it's good. It's for 100 percent of the kids in the building. I think it's it's good that these um, kids get a good breakfast. I think it's it will impact their learning for the rest of the day. Um, met uh, a couple of Iowa State interns that were working on this as long as the uh, as, as the uh, nutritionist uh, heading up the program. And finally, um, I guess an overriding theme not just from principals, but my thoughts also that, you know, actions speak louder than words. And so I think we've got to uh, 
you know, put our best foot forward and and really uh, hit hit some of these uh, concerns hard. Um, we can't just keep giving lip service to it and and then just walk away. So again, thank you, principals. I, I thoroughly enjoyed visiting uh, with you, and uh, I have a, a, a few more buildings left to go. Thank you, Director Pawson. Director Klein, Jerome. Um, the Finance Committee um, met last week, and we are looking into setting up an insurance committee that would involve all employee groups. Um, we haven't worked out quite the details and the timelines on this, but look at cost saving measures um, in our insurance plan. And um, so it's in the beginning stages of looking into it. Thank you, Director Klein Jerome. Any other board reports? Director Beck? Um, I'm just going to give a quick update on our local school improvement advisory committee, um, which uh, Mr. Border is uh, leading right now, along with uh, Jabari Woods. Um, both Director Snyder and I are members of that committee as well. Um, right now, we're sort of ironing out exactly what our roles will be, um, but we had some really productive discussions at our last meeting on March 9th um, about how the LCAC fits right in with our um, community engagement and uh, trying to roll out CRVP and make sure we get feedback from all of the voices that we haven't heard from necessarily in the past. And so it was a very productive meeting. Um, and uh, we also discussed potentially uh, student voices being brought into that discussion as well. So um, we're working right along with that. So keep them going. Thank you, Director Beck. Any other board reports? Going once, going twice. Moving on to communications, open forum. Open forum is a time for members of the community to give input at a board meeting regarding school district issues or concerns. Individuals who want to speak should fill out an open forum request and give it to the board secretary prior to open forum. The board will not act on any issue presented during open forum if it is not published as an agenda item. The Iowa open meeting law prohibits action on any issue that is not on the agenda. The open forum request form is now available online for those who want to participate in open forum virtually. The link is located on the front page of the district website. For those who want to participate virtually in open forum, the request must be emailed to Brenda T at T T-H-I-E-B-R-E-N at DavenportSchools.org by 3 p.m. on the day of the board meeting. The president will set the amount of time allowed for individuals to speak during open forum. The board asks that no charges or complaints be made against individual employees of the district or community during open forum. Remarks that reflect negatively on the character or motives of any person will be called out of order. Um, we didn't have any virtual open forum request, but we do have one from Amber Bordolo. I believe I said that right. Hello, um, I'm Amber Bordolo. I'm with Quad Cities Interfaith. Um, and I thank you for the presentation. I think um, uh, one aspect of being um, emotionally healthy and safe is in regards to um, our school resource officer. So I wanted to talk about the memorandum of understanding. Hey, um, hang on one sec. Can you state your name and address for the sure, record? Sure, Amber Bordolo. I have a 21585 Utica Ridge Road in Davenport. Um, so yeah, regarding the, um, the memorandum of understanding uh, regarding school resource officers. Um, the mayor had presented that, I think it was like two or three weeks ago now. Um, and I wanted to ask all of you to make sure that there is some plan within this MOU to address disproportionality. We all know that that is something that we, all of us, are striving to combat um, within our school. And we really need to make sure that this MOU clearly states how we will protect our black and brown children and our children with disabilities from being disproportionately negatively impacted by police. Um, you know, what is the plan for if the data that they're collecting shows 
that um, there is disproportionality, what are the steps that are going to be taken? That is not mentioned in the MOU, and um, that is why I'm here to speak today to make sure that before that is passed and agreed upon, that there is something in there. And we do have, we worked with a national organization called Advancement Project, and we have a whole template kind of written up and um, you know that we did provide to the mayor and I think to most of you as well. Um, but I'm not, I'm not here to dictate what those steps are, just to call that there does need to be something in place. Um, so yes, that was all. <laughs> she made me lose my train of thought here, but that was, um, that was really all in regards to that memorandum of understanding. And if we could um, have another, have that updated and then have that released again um, before uh, approved. So thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're being Thanks upstaged. for bringing your cheerleader with you, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will move on to the consent agenda. May I have a motion on the consent agenda? Mr. President. Director Hayes. I move the board accept the consent agenda as written. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Beck. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Beck? Yes. Director Postion? Yes. Director Klein Jerome? Yes. Director Snyder? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on approval of bills? Mr. President? Director Beck? I move that the following recommend following resolution recommended by the administration be adopted for the adoption of the bills from the bill listing periods of March 4th, 2021 to March 17th, 2021. Resolved all claims presented to the board having been duly certified as correct by the secretary, reviewed by the administration and board members, and they are hereby audited and allowed as just claims and warrants drawn on the treasury for the several amounts. Further resolved, the payment of claims and salaries be approved as presented for the periods of March 4th, 2021 to March 17th, 2021. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Hayes. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director Beck? Yes. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Klein Jerome? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. Director Snyder? Yes. Director Poston? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. Superintendent report. None at this time. I was trying to get a little break so I could get a drink, but all right. Committee <laughs> reports. Uh, finance committee report. Who's got that? Kevin. Well, I think you already kind of handled it in your... Uh, no, Board I only talked you. insurance. No, we, we met last uh, Wednesday, and I think Kevin's going to present. Yeah. Gary is out there somewhere, so he'll correct me if I say anything in, wrong or mislead you. Um, there's three attachments on this um, item. Um, the first one, I'm going to go number one, number three, and number two on that list. I, had, I got those out of order. But the first one shows... Can you pull that microphone um, a little closer? microphone sure the first one shows are some of our key report key factors um, that go into our budget this is for february of 21 hey kevin can you wait until he gets those up there he or she <laughs> that first one There's Gary. <laughs> I think Gary just joined us. Hey, Gary's there. <laughs> I've been here. It was my, uh, no, I've been here. My phone went off. I forgot to turn it off. <laughs> so this first report shows you some of the key measures um, through February. And it also, it gives you the five years prior. So we've got five years plus this year's history. And you'll see, I put some of these in yellow to, so you could draw your attention to those. Um, for our FY21 budget, our um, unspent balance is running at about 57%, which when you look at a trend, it's, that's where we're projecting it to be. 
we've been at 62, 64, 65, so we've been in the low 60s. So we're doing much better with this. Um, one of the key things to remember too is this is through February, so when we get to March on, we've had some of the early retirements, so this, this percentage should get a little bit better. Um, we'll have some better months. Um, the other, the other one is for the annual unspent budget. It's roughly the same. It just takes into account um, just for the annual amount. We're running at 58%. Again, the trend is going in the right direction. It was in the in the low 60s um, historically. Um, solvency, which I think is one of the most important factors that go into a budget. You'll see that we're running at about we're estimating to be between 12.4 and 12.9%. Um, there's a little note in there that says that the goal target is, is 5 to 15%. So we're right where we belong with that factor. Um, and finally, um, for our certified budget on all funds, the very last number on the bottom right, um, this is all funds combined. We're sitting at 56% of our budget spent. Um, again, the trend is much better go, going in the right direction. We were in the low 60s and now we're in mid 50s. So that's a good sign. Any questions on that item? Uh, Director Snyder. Hey, Kevin, since we're at 56.3%, what is our target percent right now? Where we ideally want to be? Well, ideally, we'd like to be just under 100%, but um, for, for right now, that 50% in that range is right where we need to be. Okay. Any other questions? You're free to move on to the next okay. one. Okay, if you go to the third item, perfect. Um, this shows in general fund on the left, the revenues on the top and expenditures on the bottom. You'll see that that's 56% 50 of our total revenue is received. That's not as high as we'd like it to be, but you have to remember when we get into April is when we get our larger tax check. So it's where we expect it to be. So it's running right along the trend of where we should be. So that one is, uh, it's, do, it's, it's what we expect. On the expenditure side, I did highlight the salaries and benefits because we're always looking at, the, at that number um, as far as percent of the budget. Um, and we're, we're, going, we're trending in the right direction with those. And the last on the total expenditures, we're running at 61%. And you'll see from a trend perspective too, we are, we're coming down from the 64% down to the 61%. The other funds on the right, um, you can ask questions about those, but those are just for information right now. Um, everything's in line where we need to be. Director Klein, Jerome. Um, Kevin, could you explain the CARES money in the paper? They talked about the state is getting $775 million and districts are all going to get a percentage of. How does it work? Do we spend money out of our general fund and then we get reimbursed? Are we just going to get the money that's coming to us ahead of time? Could you explain the CARES Act money yep. coming in? It's a reimbursement process. We have to submit for reimbursement. They have some. Uh, items in there where we when you spend more than a certain amount of dollars you have to get permission ahead of time we were just talking about this this morning in an IASBO meeting um, you have to have it for the right purpose but it is a reimbursement process so we have to spend the money first and then request reimbursement but you don't and have we, to ask ahead of time for everything no okay this is Gary these reports we started back in November and that's a good Kevin did a very good job I just want to point out that probably the report that you're looking at the screen provides us the most um, optimistic view of where we think we're going to be based on where we are 
So you can see the trend is for us to be underspending um, where we have in previous years, underspending the percent of our budget. So we're getting to the time of year that things start defining themselves, where we're going to be. This is through February. Um, when we report in April, I think we'll have a, this is a good picture and it'll just get clearer as we go along. We're also at the time of year when we start to say we need to readjust our budget. Um, we talked about local revenue being lower. I think Kevin, I don't, I think we showed it to the uh, finance committee, but I think our interest income is a half a million dollars short of where we thought it might be. And really by this time of year, we realize that we're just not gonna have that type of revenue. So we, we gotta make adjustments. We won't do it until the end, but to realize that we're getting the point, uh, the point in the school year that we start to be able to um, make a lot uh, more solid projections. Any other questions? Um, I don't really have a question. I just want to make a comment. I think that this is awesome. It has been long overdue. It's nice to see where you're at percentage wise. And for future years, you'll be able to go back and obviously some months we probably spend more than others and we're able to figure out what areas where we can cut to kind of get in there. So I, I love this. I think this is great. Um, it just goes to show getting the right people in place and the mentorships and things like that have really paid off um, worth their weight in gold, probably more than we'll ever spend on, you know, Gary being a financial guru. I don't know how your guys' minds work, but it's a different thing, like sitting in the negotiating meetings and Kevin sitting there running through all that stuff in his head. It's, it's mind boggling how you guys do this stuff, but um, I just wanted to reiterate, I think that this stuff's great and it's able to keep us on track and we're able to pinpoint all this stuff. Uh, Director Hayes. Just backing up a little bit, Kevin, you had mentioned a right purpose. Can you go into detail on that a little bit again? I believe it's for safety. If you mean for the CARES Act funds? Yes, yes. It's for life safety and lost learning. Okay. Correct me if I've missed those. I was catching up what CARES Act money was for in a school's process, and I believe those are the two main ones. CARES Act, it, the, the second wave, it is it, basically if you can relate it to COVID, you, you can work it into your budget. Um, and, and the two main things are that. And that's where we're really going to focus on the safety, the health and safety of our students and the loss and, and accelerating learning. That's the, 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 the direction we're choosing to look at it. Um, and then there's really good guidance. The guidance is coming out just as fast as, as, as the dollars are and the state's doing a nice job of, of putting out guidance. And so we, we have everything that we need to determine whether or not a, an expense is COVID related because there's new things that come up every single day. And so there's, there's good guidance to, to share with us, but, but our main thing is going to be the health and safety of our students and accelerating learning due to COVID losses. So. Thank you. Right. Director Poston. So can that money be used for interventionists then? If, if the reasoning for their loss of learning is due to COVID, which is yes, then yes, it can be. It can be utilized for uh, a wide array of different ways to make up or to accelerate learning. So yes, it can be. It's an appropriate expense. And do we have a dollar figure, a total dollar figure on that? So right now, the money that we have allocated, I believe, is just over $20 million. And it's, it, it expends itself in September 2023. Does that June, sound right? End of June of 2023. That's the federal fiscal year's end of September, but we have to have it done by June of 2023. So by we then. have a two-year plan that we can put in place. Did you have any more, Director Poshin? Well, this I, this is politics, I guess, but um, that that funding is not until twenty twenty three. No, it it lasts until then. Oh, okay. So it it is uh, it's a one time 
dollars that we receive to to in, ensure health and safety for our students and accelerate learning. And there's some other things that are due because of COVID. We need to um, make sure that we are covering costs. Example, we have some food, some hot lunch, food, nutrition costs and things like that. That's obviously not health and safety or related to um, uh, accelerated learning, but it's allowable. So those are some of the things that we are working through getting down into the weeds, but it can, it, we feel the same sense of urgency that you do. And we're beginning to work with the department of ed. The department of ed is putting out um, a suggested mode to accelerate learning. That's going to be coming out very soon. There was a meeting with the urban education network superintendents like, Hey, what are you guys doing with these dollars to make sure that we're, we're doing the best that we can. And so um, that, that is right on the horizon because summer school is right around the corner. Um, after, we have after school Saturday things that we could be performing right now where there's all kinds of things that we can start engaging with those dollars. And, and, and an interventionist boost to the core all the way up from kindergarten, preschool, all the way up to, to, to seniors in high school. There's things that we, we should and could be doing. Hope that answers your question, Director Poshton. Director Snyder. I don't want to shift the whole focus to this uh, COVID dollars, um, but if we can show that learning, you know, has faltered because of COVID, which I think we can um, fairly easily, unfortunately, would that money be able to be used then to say, offer a summer school program mm -hmm. yes if you can re basically any kind of learning loss that we have can be attributed to the to the pandemic and so summer school uh, after school all of those things are very appropriate uses of those dollars absolutely can be we want to make sure we get a one shot with these dollars we want to make sure that we are using them research-based best way possible to, to, to accelerate the learning of our students. And so we, we, we don't want to rush in and spend the dollars right away. We want to make sure that we have the right plan. And so it, while, while we have our students in our hands right now and everybody has a sense of urgency, we want to make sure that we utilize those dollars the best we can. Another potential outcome for those dollars would be, you know, we might, we might um, pilot a program that is innovative and when the because when these when these there's a sunset there's a cliff there's a financial cliff to these dollars and when they're over it might be time to reallocate some of the way that we're using our dollars in the way that worked during covid during this next two years and so we're also looking at it as a way to try innovative techniques that that can transform how we educate our students because as we know things are completely different now uh the way our students learn the way our i mean you heard meredith say that they they did uh virtual auditions and now our kids are, are having the opportunity to go to a national level so the game has ultimately changed and this will be an opportunity for us to utilize those dollars in an innovative way and so it's very important that we we get it right director Poshton. and this would be uh, one example and and uh, possibly other buildings are doing it but uh, principal bowman at fillmore they're doing an accelerated learning where they're having the students uh, um, that need the extra uh, class classroom time. It's in kindergarten and first grade. So they do that at the end of the day. Director Klein, Jerome. Um, my understanding is that 20% of that money has to go to the lost learning program. At least that's what I'm reading. Um, my one caution is, uh, yes, staff would be great, but we just got to the point where we are the right size. So let's be careful adding staff that in two years, this money's gone and we can't support it. So keep that in mind as well. That's an excellent point. And that's why it's important to remember that this as a district, that this is, this has a cliff. And so if we want to continue with a reading interventionist or we want to continue with an at-risk teacher at the high school that we know that if this person's going to change then we have to stop doing this in order to keep doing this and that's an 
absolutely what we have to keep in mind at our finance committee. We have to keep that in mind with all of our federal and state dollars that come to us where those programs can be shifted or changed if we do find something innovative. That is absolutely critical that we, we keep that um, on our radar to make sure that that does not happen because it, hap it has happened in the past. You know, we would write a grant for something and then that grant goes away and we have these wonderful employees, but we didn't take this away to keep this. And so those are, those are things that the, the school board has to absolutely keep on their mind when we're, di when we're discussing these dollars. Great point. Director Beck. Um, I actually, one of my board requests was about uh, <laughs> summer plans um, because this, and this feeds right into it. I've been hearing a lot that, you know, parents want their kids to go to school this summer that they may have lost learning. And I guess, and I appreciate the, the, the cautious approach that we don't wanna get ourselves in a hole that we can't dig out of. And I appreciate that we can't just willy nilly add staff. Um, but my, my request specifically addresses those earliest learners who need the extra reading support, right? And we need to get them that reading support now because they're in those early grades now. And then those students who are supposed to be graduating um, because they're the ones that need to be ready to be citizens and they may have lost that um, time in school as well. And so it may be a, a little bit more urgent to deal with that now rather than next year, even though we may be able to, to spend the money for a couple years. So. We, we um, to, those are great points. And to answer them, we have a group of people that are working on what does that look like? And there's a wide range of people from our social emotional learning team to our curriculum development team that are working on those things right now, very preliminary, um, as we wanna make sure that we have best practices in place and always, in our district, we offer a, a summer school for our students that need to catch up on their credits. And right now, what that looks like and, and how that's going to shape over the summer is, is in the progress of being, being built. So those, those actually, those two areas take precedent. It's kind of interesting that you pointed those out. So nice work. Any, any other questions? Kevin, I'll turn it back over to you. All right. If we could go to that slide number two, the TJ touched on this, and it's the only thing I would really want to mention on this. These are the other funds, revenues, and expenditures. And if you go to the bottom of that page, and this has to do with ESSER dollars again, you can see there's a negative in our nutrition fund. If you remember, you lose a lot of revenue in your, in, in your nutrition fund, and we're trying to staff to, to feed children and families. This is one of the areas that we can use the dollars to help lift the nutrition fund back to a positive balance. The same is true on our out of our out of before and after school programs. If if the fund goes negative, we'll be able to use those funds to help stabilize. Director Beck. Um I'm thinking back to when I first started on the school board. It was my understanding that our food and nutrition services were um an enterprise fund which I was led to believe is sort of self-funded. Can you explain why it's been so affected this past year? We kept the staff that we had. We had some staff that left, but we kept the staff so we can continue to feed students and families. So we still had those ongoing expenses, but we did not have the revenue to back it up. You are correct. An enterprise fund, food service fund is an enterprise fund. So it should be, you know, in normal times, self-supporting, but this isn't normal time, and so we chose to feed families and feed children, even though they weren't in class. And it's a, I think it's a great thing. It's not great to have a negative balance, but the reason behind it makes total sense. That makes a lot of sense now. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Looks like there's no other questions for you, Kevin. Was that all you had? Thank you, sir. Gary, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, other than uh, last month, we talked about one of the board members that asked about looking at a report for um, 
the comparison on salaries on cost per student. And so we've got two or three other reports, and I know we've taken more time tonight, but I'd like to add those to our next meeting if we could to look at the ISB report for the cost per student, the forecast five cost per student, and Jamie's work on uh, staff that we've added and staff that were reduced. So I'd like to maybe pick those three reports up at another meeting. We'll see what we can do about that, Gary. I'm sure we can get it done. Great, thanks. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to items requiring action. Can I have a motion on item 10.01? Mr. President. Director Hayes. I move the board establish a hearing date of April 12, 2021 at six o'clock p.m. to approve the amended budget for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2021. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Potts. Kevin, I'm going to call on you. Do you want to give us a little background on this? Sure. Um, this is the uh, notice that we so that we can tell the public when we're going to have this hearing to inform them of a more accurate picture of how we're going to spend our funds, those four items, those four categories. It changes nothing as far as the tax rate. This just puts the community on notice and allow us to put in uh, notice in the paper 10 to 20 days before the 12th. So we'll take action on this on the 12th. This just sets the hearing. Thank you. Are there any questions? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. Director Snyder? Yes. Director Poston? Yes. Director Klein Jerome? Yes. Director Beck? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on item 10.02? Mr. President. Director Hayes. Administration recommends the board of establish a hearing date of April 12th at 6 o'clock p.m. to approve the budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022. Second. Thank you. Seconded by Director Klein Jerome. Uh, Mr. Poscatini, can you, did I say that right? Posacani. I got it that time. Can you uh, give us a little background on this one as well? Sure. What, I, what we have posted up there is exactly what it's going to look like in the paper. It's what we talked about last time of how we're, how we're going through each of our line items, both of our revenue and our expenditures, to get to a final tax levy of $15.29 which is exactly where we're at at this current year. So it, it holds our tax rate steady. And the, the uh, just, to, it's the same thing. It's set, it, tonight is just setting the hearing date so that we can post this in the paper, inform the public and take action on the 12th. Perfect, thank you, Mr. Posacani. Got it right that time. Uh, is there any questions? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Klein Jerome? Yes. Director Beck? Yes. Director Potts? Yes. Director Poston? Yes. Director Snyder? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on item 10.03? Mr. President? Director Hayes? District administration has determined it's appropriate to provide an early retirement incentive for two employees of extended tenure who opt to retire from the district at and not before or after the conclusion of the current or assignments of the year in which they plan to exercise their participation in the offer. The plan provides employees with the, opportun with the option and opportunity for an early retirement from their employment with the Davenport Community School District. This plan is designed to show our appreciation for our staff's service to aid in the transition into retirement and to allow flexibility with certified staffing requirements. Thank you, Director Hayes. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Beck. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Director Hayes? Yes. Director Beck? Yes. Director Klein-Jerome? Yes. 
Okay. That was a yes, right? That was a yes. Sorry, got a frog okay. in the throat. <laughs> Director Poston. Yes. Director Potts. Yes. Director Snyder. Yes. <laughs> My vote is yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion on item 10.04? Mr. President. Director Poston. Administration recommends the board approve the naming of Brady Street Stadium track for Ira Dunsworth. Second. Seconded by Director Klein Jerome. Rob, did you want to say anything about this before we vote on it or anything? Actually, I, I, I have Kevin Peterson, the athletic director from uh, <coughs> Central High School. Um, if you had any questions, we were here to, we had, we, again, we feel, uh, I think we kind of went through things the last time uh, during the discussion mode, but um, if you are moving on that, we do have kind of plans on what our next steps would be as far as um, like not a ribbon cutting, but some kind of event that's coming up right around the corner. So we could share some of that. Um, and again, I, you know, it's, it's hard. I don't want to influence, but I, I feel like, you know, the, the documents and the information that we provided before, you know, really stand up against anything else that we've named in the district, you know, uh, after a, a leader or um, uh, someone in the district. So I feel it kind of stands on its merits of what you've seen before and uh and uh i'm, I'm excited but i don't want to get too excited till the vote's over <laughs> that's a good answer mr peterson did you want to add anything no i just second what rob said um if, if you've ever been in the presence of Ira Dunsworth, you, you know why we're doing that um he's a great man he's a great coach great leader um still very involved in everything you have to school Well, we'll see what we can do to help you out with that. Can I, I just, I'll follow up with one additional comment. Uh, one of the things I think of a lot when I think of like our hall of honors and things that we have in our district, whatever, it's service back to others. Clearly it's an individual who's given service back to others when we're thinking about something. It's not someone who just was a winning coach and then, you know, retired and moved to Florida. Someone who's given back multiple time and effort from him, not only him and his family. That's why I share that also. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Is there any other discussion director or, yeah director Potts you know so many times in in our lives we people earn recognition and they're demonstrated and they're given that recognition when they're dead and this is an opportunity we're going to recognize somebody who is still alive and still involved in the very thing he's being recognized for and that's that's a testament to that individual not to us, but to that individual's impact that he has had on countless children, countless adults, countless other coaches, countless parents. And I, and I think it's, a, it's an opportunity that we are fortunate to have. Thank you, Director Potts. Any other discussion? Director Snyder. Yeah, just to add on to uh, what Director Potts said, too, is... Uh, Mr. Dunsworth was not only a leader on the track, but he also was a leader in the classroom. I didn't have him, I mean, I had him as a teacher, um, but I never ran track. I was way too fast and I didn't want to discourage the other kids. <laughs> um, but he was, all, he was an outstanding teacher too that, that reached kids in the classroom, um, aside from being pretty much a legend uh, in the track world around here thank you for that picture director snyder i appreciate that any other discussion seeing none i'm gonna call for the vote director poston yes director klein jerome yes director potts is that me yes, you. yes. i'll try to say it in your good ear next time that's all right yeah we'll see. <laughs> Director Hayes. Yes. Director Beck. Yes. Director Snyder. Yes. I'll be a blue devil for tonight. I'll, yes. Motion carries. Can I have a uh, motion on item 11.01? <laughs> I just said thank you. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. Thank you. Now we can celebrate. <laughs> 
Mr. President. Director Beck. Uh, I don't know if I can follow that up. Um, I move that. Or wait, the discussion I This is a discussion. Yeah. Right. Never mind. Discussion item. Can I call it on? We're done with the action item. Yep. This is a discussion item. I was just seeing if anybody was going to catch that, and obviously no one did. I did. I was calling. <laughs> Kevin, would you like to give us an update on this? You can lead the discussion. Sure. We wanted to introduce this so you could see it before we bring it back to you on the 12th to ask for the formal request. I have made a, the initial request online through the School Budget Review Committee to include us on the hearing. There's a hearing on June 17th, 2021, for us to appear for SBRC abatement, for abatement, um, asbestos abatement, for FY16 through FY2020. In those years, we used the general fund dollars to um, do some of these projects, to do these projects, and we want permission to be able to have the authority back for those funds. You've talked about authority a lot, so this will put it back into our authority, and that is part of what we've been estimating when we're showing you our budget. Um, so this amounted to $1.5 million. This is just a draft of a letter that has the specific specific elements that SBRC requests in the cover letter. We'll have to fill in who's gonna appear. Um, I put April 12th as a tentative approval date. We'll have to send them the minutes because it requires the board to act on not just what the project is, but the amount. So we'll have that ready to go on the 12th, but this is uh, important um, for us to get back those five years. The other thing to point out is you don't see FY21 on there because we've been using PEPL funds for our abatement projects, which is where it should be. If it's, it can be used, general fund can be used, but when you have the PEPL funds available, I'd much rather put the dollars in the classroom as opposed to doing abatements. Um, and that's what PEPL and sales tax funds are meant for. Any questions? Director Beck. This is more of a comment, but I just wanted to say thank you. You actually answered the question that was in my head. <laughs> Good. At the end of that, asking why we didn't use PEPL funds for this because that seemed like the appropriate place. So I appreciate that. Bet. Um, and is this typical that we can ask for spending authority for something that we that's retroactive? Yes, districts have done that. They've done three to five years. Um, I believe there were some in, in the most recent hearing that there were some schools that went backwards that many years. I don't know if it was for abatement, but there was other, um, like a preschool startup or something like that okay. costs. So okay. yes, it's not uncommon. Okay, thank you. Any other, Director Snyder. And I did catch where you said in 2021, we're now using Pebble as we should. Um, I'm assuming this is a once and done. We can't go back in 10 years and say, whoops, we screwed up again. We started using in our general fund. I mean, that seems kind of backwards. I mean, I understand why districts could do it or would do it. Um, but now, uh, I mean, basically it's giving you more general fund dollars or, you know, freeing some of those up. Um, I would assume that that's a practice we would not want to be in anymore. You're correct. Any other questions? Any other questions? Well, it looks like, uh, well, nope, you're going to be on the hook for another one. So, all right. Are there any uh, board requests? All right, we have two board requests. Uh, the first request is an agenda item from Director Klein Jerome. Uh, description of request, presentation to the board regarding the TAG program, including number of students in the program, how are students identified, what types of things are taught, covered in this program, et cetera. Why are you requesting this information or agenda item? The board is focused on student achievement and this 
is one area that is often overlooked. This is a request I had made over seven months ago. Is there a second? Second. Second in by POTS. When would you like this information or agenda item? As soon as possible. Uh, second board request is by Director Beck. Date of request 3-22-2021. That was the same date for this one. I forgot to read that. Item requested, agenda item. Description of request. I would like a presentation on the student built home project and the opportunities for students to get career experience and ready for careers. Why are you requesting this information or agenda item? One of our community members mentioned that enrollments are down in the student built homes. Student built homes and reminded me what a gym this program is. I think it would be great to highlight this amazing program. Is there a second? Second. Second. I think Director Potts beat you on that one. Yeah, he did. When would you like this information? As soon as feasible. Uh, another board request by Director Hayes, date of request 3-22-2021. Item request, agenda item. Description of request, presentation on the Creative Arts Academy program. Why are you requesting this information or agenda item? No updates since the move. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Director Beck, quick on the draw there. When would you like this information? As soon as feasible? Yeah. All right. I'll take this one. M moving, moving on to administrative reports. Mr. Superintendent. So one of the things that we wanted to make sure we come back to the school board with are the audit findings that were presented by our auditing firm. And so I believe Kevin Lisa is going to give us an update on the on the progress of our audit findings and next steps in that area. Um, so if you remember back when the audit was presented to you, you received um, a management letter and within that management letter, there are some comments um, and suggestions. And so what we have, um, I have a report for you, is on the control deficiencies. And one of the things I'd like to, you know, I'd like to point out is that these are uh, merely suggestions. Um, we want to take most of them as seriously as possible and implement as many as we can as quickly as possible. Um, so I summarized, um, the in, there was initially about uh, 15 or so. I summarized them into about 10 because there were, like the first ones were cash and investments. Um, we have already completed the problems that we had with them. Um, on the list of the 10 we have, there are seven that are already been completed and the others um, are works in progress. Um, the one that I would like to point out that is a, a huge uh, task is uh, capital assets. And um, we currently use a spreadsheet. We use Excel to track our assets. Um, the auditors would like us to be able to use our Business Plus software, and we would too, um, but it is a huge process to take this on. And uh, so we're, this will be a work in progress. Um, we cannot cop complete that this year. Um, we can we can start, um, but we will. This will probably go over a year or so. A um, couple of the other ones um, we've already um, put in place the listing of the bills. We've changed that format for you, so now they're in all check number order. I think in sequence order is much easier to read. Um, we implemented just recently um, the superintendent's credit card review. Um, we have the. Uh, uh, Kent Poston is reviewing that from the Finance Committee. Um, we have some ongoing things with the electronic purchasing. Uh, we have a, we have a uh, process that's in place right now. We use <coughs> Google Docs. Um, that's not ideal. We'd like to use our Business Plus software and 
Um, we have a big update that will be happening later this fall. Um, so we probably won't put some of that in place until after that. So we don't have to change things twice. Um, we have a couple others for the food and nutrition program. Um, we've already updated uh, the uh, procurement plan that was needed um, with Connie and um, the nutrition phone lines. We uh, got a, a comment last year that we had charged some things to uh, a nutrition fund that should have been charged to general fund. We've implemented a process to review that more regularly along with the operations team as well. Um, and the last one is the ESSER COVID expenditures that I'd like to touch on. Um, that was one of those we in originally intended to um, spend those funds over two years and we ended up spending them much quicker um, right at the end of when our fiscal year was done. Um, so that kind of caused some hiccups in our reporting process there. But we've worked that out and we'll be ongoing that for that this year. Um, any questions, comments? Director Beck. Thank you very much for following up on these and for explaining them to us. You're welcome. We really appreciate that. Sure. Anything else? I think you knocked it out of the park, Lisa. Thanks for the follow-up, greatly appreciate it. Superintendent, do you have anything else you wanted to add? No, thank you. All right. On to the board reflection part. Um, and when we do this part, I think we've kind of been getting off track a little bit. We need to focus on the topics that we talked about today and that's what we need to uh, reflect on. Um, and since you looked at me first, I'm gonna go with Director Snyder. <laughs> Well, the, the first one I had is the obvious um, uh, that we uh, voted tonight to rename the track after our uh, legendary coach, Ira Dunsworth. And the second thing I had is the huge progress we're making in regards to our finances um, um, with the uh, SBRC, with the audit update, with the um, getting our, our spending, or I mean our uh, down and, and our percentages back in line. Thank you, Director Snyder. Director Potts. These deals, I spent, I specifically or went over the junior high one, the six, eight one. And you read through those skills and you know that a kid that possesses those skills is gonna be successful, period not just in school, but in life, because those are the things, the traits human beings need to be successful. And so these, these little blueprints have the potential to be the most impactful thing we've seen in a long time. And naming the track fire was a close number two. <laughs> Thank you, Director Potts. Director Hayes. I also like those um, pamphlets and the correlation between the student progress as well as the um, social and emotional learning. Also, I like to um, give kudos to President Gosa. I like the way the meetings are ran with the front loading of information that we discuss it in advance so it really cuts down on the questions. It provides a lot of clarity when the administration comes to the table. I mean, like as an example, Kevin and Lisa both, all of them, every time someone prevents, they usually have already anticipated what some of the questions are gonna be. And like Director Beck said a couple of times tonight that I was gonna ask that, but you answered that. And I really appreciate the in-depth information that's provided right now that cuts down on a lot of the questions. And I owe a lot of that to Superintendent Schneckloff and President um, Gosa for their leadership skills in that. So thank both of you for that as well. Thank you, Director Hayes. Director Beck. Um, I would say the highlight for me were the same things, these social emotional learning guides um, and knowing that 
uh, we're making them available to everyone that we can. Um, and I appreciated the question you asked about translating them into other languages because I think that's very, very important. Um, and then the uh, naming of the Brady Street track for Coach Dunsworth, who I did not know, um, or I don't know, I should say, but uh, uh, I, I think it's fantastic based on just what I've read about him. He's an amazing person and um, it's a, it's a well-deserved honor. Um, and then I guess my third one is that I appreciate how, how smoothly we've been, how well we've been informed, um, kind of echoing what Director Hayes said that, um, you know, a lot of our questions are being anticipated and we're getting information so that we don't have to sit here and learn things for the first time when we have to vote on vote on them. And so I really appreciate that. And I think that's a testament to how well the board is working with the superintendent and the administration right now. Thank you, Director Beck. Director Poston. Well, <clears throat> number one, naming the track in Ira's name. Um, it's got to be right up there at the top of my list. Um, and I would echo what uh, Director Potts said as far as the family learning guides. Um, and then also, um, I'm excited about how things are going with the uh, uh, Finance Committee and all the input that we're getting from Gary Sinclair and having Kevin on board. And uh, so I'm excited about that and I think we're headed in the right direction. Thank you, Director Poshin. Director Klein, Jerome. Um, I'm excited to hear Central High is doing Little Shop of Horrors this spring, one of my favorites. Um, plus, I'm just glad to see musicals coming back to the schools and being able to have the students perform. So I think that's great. Um, and I really do appreciate that Kent is going to visit these schools because in the absence of the um, showcases, my mic died. Oh, there. Um, in the absence of the showcases, that we haven't had, he's telling us some great things that are going on in the building that we wouldn't be aware of if somebody hadn't gone out there. So I appreciate, Kent, that you are sharing that with us. Thank you, Director Klein, Jerome. Superintendent Schneckwell. I had a very interesting conversation over the weekend as a group of parents sitting around the table. What do you do when your child does this? What do you do when your child does that? And really, there's no playbook for raising a child in the different stages. And, and God forbid you have a child that's completely the opposite of what you are. So if you are somebody that understands your self-awareness, and it's just unfathomable how somebody can keep bumping into things and doing, you know, the, the notion that you can have four or five research-based, tried, tried, true solutions to help you as a parent, um, that if you if you walk with your child with these interventions, they're they're going to be better human beings coming out of it. I think that is a solid takeaway for everybody in our community, and also make sure that your stuff is updated in campus because it's very important for us uh, to to contact you. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Schneckloff. Um I think our uh, my takeaways our meetings are way more productive. We get a lot more data and information. It's nice to see that we can track where we're at percentage wise, so we know if we're overspending or whatever, so we can correct it right away instead of doing it at the end. I mean, even the social emotional learning guides that's awesome. I'm just glad we're you know moving forward and doing things that we need to be doing that we should have been doing, but. Um, can't look backwards only forwards and you know where we're going looks like a good place and uh we're moving on with things so um it, it looks up and up every meeting it gets more productive uh they're not like long drawn out meetings and you know the board's asking a lot of questions and things like that so um again it's all about having the right people in the right places and it gets things done and um changing the mindsets and everything like that so all in all, I think our meetings are getting better and better. And uh, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>